You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm so excited to be here today with Rob Kent. Hey, Rob. Hi, Sammy. I'm so excited to be here with you as well. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited to talk to you. You have talked to so many literary types. You've talked to like one million authors. You run a wonderful podcast. You write all kinds of books, including a very exciting one that I can't wait to talk to you about today called Rob Worm's Bird Adventure. And you do the Banneker Bone series. I mean, so much. So, Rob, I'm so excited to tell, to, to be with you today. And can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? I will be happy to. Sammy, I have been watching you on YouTube for years. You've talked to so many of my favorite authors. And anytime I'm getting ready to have a conversation with an author on my podcast, the Middle Grade Ninja podcast, I'll say, well, what did Sammy's, how did Sammy's conversation go with that author? That'll give me some idea how to prepare my conversation with him. Oh my gosh. Are you saying that I've been a part of your research? Sammy, you are, uh, you have wings, but you are the wind beneath my wings. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Well, Rob, gosh. Okay. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your podcast. Tell us about you and especially like, are you, are you a Hoosier? Tell us about that. I am a very proud Hoosier. I was yes. born in Hammond, Indiana. I have lived here all of my life. I have my degree in English from Indiana University, and I teach at the Indiana Writers' Center. I met my wife here in Indiana. Our son was born here in Indiana. I am very much a Hoosier, and the movie Hoosiers actually filmed some of its uh, uh, scenes in my hometown of Lebanon, Indiana. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about your work. And I know you mentioned your podcast. I've also listened to your podcast, and it's so great and so you have such a, a depth, you know, like you you really have the space to go into long conversations and you've talked to so many, so many folks. Sammy, I am blushing from head to toe. That's uh, very kind of you. I <laughs> cannot believe my good fortune with some of the some of my absolute heroes I've been able to talk with sometimes more than once. And and I do. We do uh, conversations that go anywhere from one to two hours uh, with authors that in some cases I have admired forever. Um, like uh, I had the good fortune to talk with Gregory McGuire comes to mind who wrote Wicked and I read <sighs> Wicked way back when I was a young reader. That was an absolute thrill. I talked with Catherine Patterson, which her book Bridge to Terabithia is one of the first middle grade books I ever read that really made me fall in love with middle grade. Uh, and I've talked to so many local Indiana authors such as uh, Maurice Broadus, John David Anderson, Lisa Phipps. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start to for, forget people. <laughs> I, I do that I've had too. So many wonderful folks that I've had the, the good fortune to talk with. Oh, I love that. You know, I'll tell you a quick story about Catherine Patterson. Um, well, so this person that I know is a children's librarian, and um, I don't like to talk about her very often, but I just will make an exception here. So she had this friend who had this teenage daughter, and she wanted to get into reading. And she said, you know, what's a good book for my kiddo? And this children's librarian that I know suggested Bridge to Terabithia. And boy, it just hooked that girl right onto reading. But her mom was mad later because she said, well, she loves reading now, but she can't stop crying about this book. <laughs> so, you know, books matter, right? Well, that's the the magic. You can get so involved with characters that you you genuinely feel for them, and whether they die in the story or you just finish the book, there's a real sense of loss. But the nice thing is, you can always go back and you can read it again. Or sometimes it's uh, one of many books, and you can you can follow the same uh, character through uh, through a series. Exactly, and you know sometimes that sense of loss is pretty deep when you get to the end of a series, but. That's why we have, you know, people like you and me to hook people into new series and new authors, right? That's uh, that's the goal. I think that one of the smartest things you can do, um, whatever your age, but especially for a young person, is to read as widely as you possibly can. Because just by reading one, you're going to be entertained. You're going to enjoy fantastic stories, meet marvelous characters. But you're also going to come across new ways of seeing the world. You're going to come across information that you just can't get any other way other than reading. Oh, I love that. We're going to get into that a little bit more um, in just a second. But first of all, I want to know, Rob, can you tell us about your writing journey? 
what books have you written? Where are you at now? Are you working on anything now? Oh, I'm always working on something. Um, my mind is, uh, whether I want it to or not, is always thinking of a new story. Um, I have written, I've been publishing for um, a little over 12 years now, um, but I had been, I've been writing seriously since right around the third grade. In the third grade, I wrote a book called The Twits 2, which was Raw Dahl's unrequested sequel to his book, The Twits. I thought, well, there really should be a sequel. So I went ahead and I wrote it for him. You're welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and then I have been uh, hooked on writing ever since. Uh, I've got a trilogy available, the Banneker Bones trilogy, Banneker Bones and the Giant Robot Bees, the Alligator People and the Cyborg Conspiracy. And there's always room for more in this in this series. I can't get enough of my character, Banneker Bones. Uh, my newest book that just came out this year is a book called Goodbye to Grandma. Uh, which is a story about a girl in the sixth grade who, whose grandmother unfortunately passes away and she is unable to cry or to process her grief because when I was in the sixth grade, my grandmother died and I also had a very hard time processing my grief. And uh, based on the fact that I've just now written a book about that experience, some might say I'm still processing my grief. Sure. Uh, I also got a new book available. You mentioned, I know you're going to be excited about is Rob Worm's Bird Adventure. Uh, and the bird in this book is a robin. She plays a very big role. It's about a, a, a worm named Rob uh, who comes up to see the sun. He, worms go into deep hibernation during the winter. Uh, they go deep underground and they try and stay uh, wet until the sun comes up and the earth becomes a little bit warm. And then they make their way to the surface. Uh, and Rob couldn't be more excited to get that up there to the surface. But unfortunately, as excited as he is to see the surface, a Robin is excited to see him. She pecks him up out of the earth, flies him off. He manages to wriggle free. But in doing so, he's dropped on the roof of a human house. How's he going to get down? And when he does get down to get back to his bunch, he's going to have to deal with the robin who's still pursuing him, mm. a sizzling hot driveway, warring ants, a giant uh, spider, uh, a cat that causes all sorts of havoc. When you're a worm, basically everything in a, in a basic human backyard is out to get you. Uh, so it's an exciting, it's Indiana Jones meets, uh, meets Ranger Rick magazine. There's tons of facts about animals and birds, things that a bird lover such as yourself, Sam, you're just going to absolutely love. I love it. It also reminds me a little bit of that old timey movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Because now you've got this little guy like wandering around the wildness of a backyard, right? You know, that has captured my imagination ever since I saw it when I was a child. When yeah. I went to Disney World, they had the the the, the honeybee uh, that was in the movie, and I got to ride the honeybee. <gasps> uh, so I've got photos of me and, and a bit of a video. It looks like I'm uh, whizzing around the, the backyard. It was a life uh, lifelong dream realized there at uh. Disney World. I love that. Well, and I must say that, you know, the book is just behind you on your shelf. Boy, that Rob Worm looks so tasty. <laughs> hmm. Well, Sammy, you are welcome to try to catch him, but you can ask the Robin in this book. It's uh, it's uh, harder uh, harder than it looks. <laughs> Rob oh, Worm is I crafty and, and sure uh, like a crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, of course, I'd be rooting for the Robin because, you know, that's just how I roll. <laughs> yeah, I think oh. we've just come up with the sequel right here. It's going to be Rob Worm's Toucan Adventure. Uh, yes, let's do that for sure. I would love that. Oh, my goodness. So um, we've talked a lot about a whole variety of books. And my next question for you, do you think reading diverse books is good for kids? Uh, it is good for kids. It is essential for kids. Um, one of the reasons I've always said that uh, one of the reasons I write and one of the um, things about life that uh, rubs me the wrong way is that as much as I love being me, I have to live my whole life as me. So I'm always excited. I wake up. Oh, I'm still Rob. That's nice. But what would it be like to have any number of other experiences available uh, to other people around around the planet? And so the more widely you read, uh, the more you get to learn about how other people are, the more you get to develop empathy and feeling for other people and understanding. And that makes the world more understandable to young readers and also to readers of any age. That gives you an idea of what others are going through. That allows you to develop a greater understanding of looking beyond your own experience. 
So the more diverse books, whether you're reading about worms, whether you're reading about characters of different race, different religions, different philosophies, not everybody thinks the same way you do. And that's actually sometimes a good thing because they might have solutions you wouldn't have figured out without their perspective. That's so true. Are you saying that if I read Rob Worm, I might get empathy for that worm and I might not want to eat it? It is possible that if you were to read Rob Worm's Bird Adventure, you might never eat another worm. You might become a vegetarian. Oh, my goodness. You know, part of me is sort of like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to change. But another part of me feels like that would be courageous. It would be courageous of me to just decide, okay, I'm going to read outside of my comfort zone. Give it a shot. See what it's like. It might change my mind. It might not change my mind. Who knows? But I'll never know unless I try. This could be a tremendous opportunity for growth. Gosh. Or you might learn more about how to catch worms better. <laughs> so I don't yes, so that's true, you. too. Yes, absolutely. So you just don't know. You just don't know the adventures that could be waiting for you in a book. Hmm. Or, you know, the different perspectives that you could see. I love that, Rob. I think that's great. I'm not surprised at all that you have such wonderful things to say. Well, we've come to the part of our show where I ask you to share something. What do you have there that you want to share with us today? Uh, Sammy, I am thrilled to share with you the very first version of Rob <gasps> Worm's Bird Adventure that I ever wrote. I wrote this over 30 years ago when I was in the fifth grade, and I also uh, illustrated it. So you've got uh, all these beautiful uh, drawings by fifth grade me. Oh, and I love book, it. I wrote this at Central Elementary School in Lebanon, Indiana, and uh I won the um, Central Elementary School Art Fair Prize for my book, Rob Worm's Bird Adventure. And so I have been thinking about that and re and thinking about Rob Worm ever since. For 30 plus years, I've been thinking about this story. And now this year, I finally got the final, final version, many, many drafts later. And so if there are any educators listening, if there are uh, anybody who has a direct impact on young people, Getting them to write books as early as possible, getting them to appreciate stories has an impact on them that they're going to carry with them for the rest of their life. I've certainly carried the impact of this the rest of my life so far. Oh, I love that. Can you show us the back of the book? I There's sure a, can. Yeah. It's a little worm maze. Oh, I love There's it. That's head, so and you fun. You can follow him all the way down to his tail. So cute. And it's so interactive. Well, Rob, that is just absolutely amazing. This has been so much fun. I'm so glad that we finally got a chance to chat. And maybe we'll even chat again someday. What do you think? Sammy, I know we'd be love to talk. I'd love to talk with you anytime. One of these days, you and I are going to create our own show. <gasps> yeah, let's do it. Why not? Who knows more about Indiana authors than you and me? You know, that's my question. Uh, nobody. I mean, we right? are, we are the Indiana us. author experts. That's us. <laughs> All right. Well, gosh, Rob, this has been so great. I'm so excited. And everybody at home, this has been Sammy, the interviewing toucan, reminding you all to read local. So long, Rob. Thank you, Sammy. Read local, everybody. <laughs>